Good morning, good morning, Tuesday, the next second day of the uh, week of repentance, second day of the week of repentance, of the 10 days of repentance. And today, brethren, we are supposed to remember that we are entering into God's presence, to the mercy seat. And as we enter to the mercy seat, we know that we have a God, not only who is our Father and who is our King, but also who is loving, who is caring, whose mercies and love and faithfulness endures forever. And yesterday we reminded ourselves the first step of repentance and even of going through a process of penitence and repentance of our sins is the acknowledgement of the attribute of God. The attribute of God of mercy, the attribute of God of love, which endures forever. Doesn't matter what happens and what is in our lives. He loves us, even in our deep sin. Remember, this is portrayed in the book of Luke, chapter 15, even as we read about the prodigal son, that even when he had wasted everything that his father had given him, and he was coming back to the father, when the father saw him at far, the Bible says that he went learning, opened his hands, and embraced him, because even on our lower estates, brethren, even on our sinful in their status, even on our tattered, spiritual tattered clothes, even when we are filthy and wicked, even then, the love of God remains for us because his love endures forever. Even this morning, my brother and sister, doesn't matter the state you are in, I want to remind you that you are not yet done with our God. He has not in any way banished you and forgotten you. Even on your filthy lags, even now, his love, even now, endures forever. He endures, his love continues, even for your life. Do you, are you feeling sometimes dejected and also separated, even from God? And you're feeling that even now, your fellowship with God, you are not sure about it? I want to remind you this morning, even as we move on to the next step of repentance, do not forget the attribute of our God. Our God is merciful. By the way, the Bible tells us, and he always recorded in the book of, uh, of Ezekiel, that he does not in any way take up and forgive us and uh, take uh, our sins and, uh, and punish us without even uh, mercy. By the way, it's good to remind all of us, even as we remember this, that it's the same God who says he is not priests by the death of a sinner. In fact, he is always careful that our lives we will be able to find restoration because he does not get priests. He is not, uh, does not take any pressure on the death of a sinner. But he always requires and desires that he may turn away from his, sick, from his wickedness and be able to turn and follow issues and the life of righteousness. And therefore, even now, the desire of God about me and you, even this morning, even on our st state that we are in, that he may be able to find we may be able to find his mercy. That as we repent of our sins, he may be able to embrace us back, clothe us from our shame, put, put uh, restores back authority and even status of sonship in our lives because that is the desire. And therefore, brethren, these us lead us to the next step. And today, I want to talk about the second step that God gives us even when he is restoring our lives. And I want to remind us that the second important step about our restoration and about our uh, forgiveness of sins is when we accept to acknowledge our sins. Yes, we acknowledge God's nature, that he is forgiving. But even if he is a forgiving God, he requires us to take a step and acknowledge, confess of our sins. Now, Psalms 51, the, the psalm that we have been leading, and verses, uh, verses 3, this is what David tells the Lord. He says, for I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done that what is evil in your sight. So you are light in your verdict and justified when you judge. In other words, David is acknowledging it's true. Not that you have cornered me for no reason. It's true I've sinned. And I cannot hide it from you anymore. It is true, it's me that I've done that, uh, that particular sin. 
it is me that have fallen away from you. And by the way, you know he is mentioning, saying he has not even only seen from any other person. He has seen from God because he was saying, by the way, he was able to corner men. He was able to hide his sin. Remember, even he went ahead and even planned how the, the, the husband of Bathsheba was to be killed in battle. And therefore, he had concealed it. He had even covered it. By the way, sometimes we sin and sometimes we cover up and nobody knows and we are feeling safe that at least our sins have been covered. But you know what? David knew that you may be corner men, but it's not very easy to corner God. It is impossible. That's why even in another Psalm 139, David asked, where can I go and hide from the Spirit of God? And he says that even if I make my bed in the Sheol, even on the depths of the dead, even there, your spirit and your presence is. And therefore, brethren, when we realize that we cannot hide anything from our God, the only important thing that we can do to find forgiveness of our sins is to take a courageous and a bold step of acknowledging, confessing of our sins. There is power on confession of sin. Any sin that has not been confessed has power and it hides in the system of the, of the, of the human life and it can destroy you today, it can destroy you tomorrow. By the way, that sin can even destroy your generation later. You can even hide it in one generation. But amazingly, the Bible says that God will always follow his anger to those who have not repented of their sins, to the third and the fourth generation. So the sins of the fathers can be even punish on the, on, the, on the daughters and the sons in the third generation if they are not repented. You know, it's true that sins can only be broken when they have been repented. And therefore, I would want to remind us that the second step is the step of acknowledging our sins. Not being looking, you know, sometimes we may want to look important. Sometimes we even feel that pride carries us even before God, our Creator. And even the one who is the preserver of our lives. And sometimes we even feel proud not even to repent and confess our sins before our God. But it's good to know and to understand that David knew it and he said, It is before you and it's through you that I have sinned. And he said, And I have known, I cannot hide my sins. They are always before me. In other words, by the way, the devil knows your sins. You know your sins. And God knows your sins. I know my sins. The devil knows where I have gone long. Even God understands we have not done what I'm supposed to have done. And therefore it is important to acknowledge. Remember, in the book of Psalm 66, by the way, and I think it's important to, to remember that verse, verse uh, uh, Psalm 66 and verses 18, the psalmist said that if I cherish sin in my heart, if I cherish sin in my heart, I could not have been healed by God. In other words, he thought and he realized that when you hide sin and when you are not able to acknowledge and confess of your sin, you are courting destruction. And by the way, when we are able to repent of our sins and when we stand before God in repentance, God is able to forgive of all our sins. And this is what the psalmist says, that if I cherish sin in my heart, the Lord will not have listened to me. But God has you are listened and I've heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withdrew his love from me. This is the psalmist who also after repentance, he is thanking the Lord that because I never hid my sin, God heard my prayer. And because he heard my prayer, he goes ahead and says, praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. When we repent of our sins and acknowledge them and we confess them, God is always willing to forgive our sins. And not only to forgive our sins, he, is not, he does not withheld, he withhold his love for us. Because his love endures forever. And therefore, my brother and sister, one of the important things that we need to remember, the wisdom of confession, that our sins must be confessed before God. Do you have a sin that you have not been able to confess for a long time? Do you have something that you did and you think it is only a secret between you and yourself even when no other person know what you did maybe unconsciously you hit someone and died at night and you ran away drove away and nobody knows it 
by the way, nobody was there. Nobody was allowed. Maybe you even committed an abortion and you hid it. And apart from the person maybe helped you to do it, who maybe was even a stranger, you are damn sure that nobody knows about it. But don't forget that there is someone whose eye is always on us. Jesus, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit knows about it. Do you know what it requires of you? It's not to pretend that everything is okay. It is to go with pertinent of heart, with sorrow, and be able to truly and sincerely repent of that sin of murder, of that sin of unfaithfulness, of that sin of wickedness, of that sin of greed, of that sin of anger and violence, of that sin of not doing what you're supposed to, of that sin of rebellion, of that sin that you backstabbed someone and betrayed someone that was, who trusted you. Maybe even nobody, even he doesn't understand that you're the one who went behind him and maybe destroyed his family, maybe destroyed his work, maybe he was demoted, maybe you went behind his back and he was fired at your place of work because you wanted the position. I want to remind you, it is important that God has given us a time and a season, a season of repentance. As we repent, may the second step of wisdom on true repentance that leads to forgiveness and restoration, the step of acknowledgement of our sins and confession. And as you confess your sins this day, my brother and sister, as you confess every manner of sin, remember the Bible says this way, in the book of 1 John chapter 1, verses 8, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive all our sins. You know, brothers and sisters, God is a merciful and a loving God. If we confess our sins and do not hide them, God will hear our prayer, as the psalmist said. And not only hearing our prayers, he will not go to withhold his love for us. He will be able to absolute of all our sins, forgive of all our sins, and be able to restore us. And finally, as he did to the prodigal son, he will be able to cover your shame. He will be able to put on the sandals of the status of sonship. He will be able to bring you back to your place of status, of fellowship with him and fellowship with men who are around you. And you know what? Your status and your relationship with God will be fully less taught. And that is the desire we have in this written season, that our fellowship with God, our shared fellowship with ourselves, our good conscience will be healed and that our fellowship with one another will be less taught back. And may the Lord bless us even as we confess our sins today because he that promised that he'll forgive, he'll keep his word because he is a faithful God and his love endures forever. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.